Hello everyone. The harassment me, my family, and my friends have experienced over the last few weeks has been nothing short of insane. I will not be responding to violent serial liars, drama farmers, or harassers whatsoever. However, after much consideration, I will address this subject one time, for the benefit of those within my community who are asking in good faith, as I have seen that there are genuine members of my community with concerns that I would like to put to rest. The communities harassing me and my family have falsely accused me of crimes, doxed me, and made threats against the lives of myself, my friends, and members of my family. The perpetrators of this campaign have absolutely no evidence of any of their so-called allegations, and they know this because none of what they are alleging happened at all. They rely on vague language and emotionally hypercharged claims to perpetuate outrage and anger. This harassment is exclusively being pushed by drama farming communities who have been asked by their creators to engage in brigading and more in the name of a grudge that is genuinely incomprehensible to me. The only pieces of evidence provided at all whatsoever are so grossly misrepresented or deliberately presented without context that they can only serve to create a narrative that is, in whole cloth, slanderously false. So let's get the facts straight. The claims against Fawn, my partner. A former thumbnailer for my channel by the name of Glooby shared his own cartoon not safe for work artwork with my partner Fawn and asked Fawn to share its own artwork in return. In the past, Glooby had unprompted sent me his own art, some of which included cartoon vaguely not safe for work elements. One was literally a joke drawing of an emoji with a cartoon penis, for example. I told him not to send that kind of art at all, as it was both unwanted and unethical, and I reinforced that boundary multiple times. While I was happy to be supportive of his aspirations as an artist, I stayed firm in my boundaries. Let me show you. Here, Glooby wanted to share a not safe for work animation that he made. I refused this after asking him if he had turned 18. I asked him this because I had previously in a voice call asked him not to send not safe for work when sharing his art. Once again, I was supportive of his art career, but was not comfortable with him sharing all of his drawings. Then, despite me setting boundaries previously, Glooby still tried to send me his own art, going so far as to say that he was of legal age in his state. I reinforced my boundary, and as I am now aware and will show shortly, he then progressed to lying about his age in order to avoid my boundary. With Fawn, the fact that Glooby shared his own art and asked to see Fawn's art was deliberately removed from the context of the so-called DM leaks to create a narrative and play into a grossly false groomer slander. Let me show you. While Fawn did share its own artwork with Glooby in a casual context, Fawn never knew Glooby's age and fairly assumed that because he was sharing his own artwork that it was fine to share its own. Nothing outside of casually sharing their own artwork ever happened, and even Glooby in his original testimony admits that nothing nefarious or malicious occurred. On top of all of this, this did not happen in my server. I was not aware of such messages between Glooby and Fawn until recently, as I do not monitor my partner's private messages. If I had known that Glooby had sent art to Fawn, I would have ensured that Fawn knew, stopped, and had enforced similar boundaries. While it would have been wise and good for Fawn to ask for an ID before sharing even cartoon not safe for work artwork that it had made, none of this matches with the genuinely insane slander being pushed by these communities, nor does any of it reflect on me, as I had nothing to do with that. This is the only evidence that is provided to any of the insanity that is thrown at my partner and weaponized to try and hurt me. Unless, of course, you count unrelated, laughably cropped, out of context, and literally years old Twitter, uh, edgy Twitter jokes as evidence. As a quick side note, my Discord server has never had not safe for work channels and has always had strict rules against posting not safe for work content. We have the strongest enforcement against not safe for work of any Discord I am aware of in this space, and unlike many other politics and politics adjacent servers, we have never had not safe for work channels or vent channels. Of course, as all Discords do, we rely on reports from users in order to become aware of incidents from across all channels on the server that may not have been directly observed by a mod. 
That said, our reports have always been promptly and carefully handled, and any serious issues that are reported are handled by my paid lead mod. This has been true for years. Volunteer chat mods have never had any obligations to handle reports, especially serious reports, which have been exceedingly rare in the first place. Volunteer mods are exactly that, volunteers, who we believe are chill enough to occasionally mute unruly chatters or random spammers. Moving on. Claims about me. Glooby worked for me on a contract basis for thumbnails. I was incredibly upfront that the pay would be based off a static percentage of the channel gross revenue, that we were a small channel, but that there was potential for growth. I never ever gave the impression that this was supposed to be a primary job or a full-time job. It was explicitly contract work from the very beginning. I did not enforce a schedule or even strict deadlines. Throughout my work with Glooby, he was always effusively positive about our agreements, my accommodations for his disabilities, and even in his recent interview, he characterized our agreements as fair. It was only under pressure and leading questions from a curiously biased interviewer that he changed his tune on this. I wanted to share a couple of examples of our interactions over the years. Here we go. Here is Glooby in June of 2022. Glooby says, Hey, I have some not amazing news. I'm dealing with a lot of neurological work issues and physical issues. I can barely hold my drawing pen. I'm having hallucinations and can barely fucking walk downstairs without vomiting or falling over. I keep having full body tremors that are starting to feel like seizures. I have constant heavy vertigo and to top it all off, I can hardly type and speak. It just sucks and I can't do anything about it yet. So I'm stuck like this for a bit. So I'm sorry if work is slow or not good. I'm really trying my best. It's also a reason, if you have even noticed, why I haven't been interacting with anyone really. All of this has been an increasing issue for my disease, and I don't want my friends and people I care about hearing me be sick and in pain 24-7. I respond, I have noticed you've been quiet lately. That's a very good reason to do so. Again, you don't have to apologize. You've always been nothing short of awesome to me and in the work you do for me and this channel. Glooby then responds sometime later, a little over a month, Hey there, just wanted to update you on my situation. I'm still sick as fuck. I may have had my first seizure yesterday, so if I'm a little slow with responding and work, that could be why. It seems my disease is ramping up a bit, so it's a bit worrying, but I'll try my best. Generally, my quality of life is pretty shit right now, but I'm going to try my best. I, re I reply with an affirmative emoji, and then I say, You let me know what works for you, and we can adapt and adjust accordingly. Your wellness comes first, and if we need to tag in some assistance on thumbnails or whatever, that's no biggie. You just let me know where you're at like this, and we'll work it out. Glooby then says, The current work need is all right for me currently. I'm just worried about being late or missing stuff. I'll try to be as open and responsive to tell you if need be. And then I respond with affirmative emojis. Then, later, we had this conversation. This was at the end of... Uh, of Glooby's contract work with the channel. Hey, Demon Mama, I wanted to talk to you about this. At this point, I think I'm too sick to work for you, and I don't want to drag you or your channel down because of this. It was hard to say this, but I want the best for you because I see how much you care and how much you want this stuff to work out, and I don't want to make it harder. I respond, you aren't dragging us down but I will accept your resignation so long as you understand you have never dragged us down and you have been nothing but a boon to me, my creations, and my team. Glooby says, or more stressful, I'm just having a bad day, but I've been thinking about this for a little bit. I respond with, with saying hug. Glooby responds saying hug. I say, I'm going to pay you for this month still, and if you need anything job-related or otherwise, please let me know. Glooby says, thank you. I will never forget what you've done for me and my family and for me as an artist. You're the reason I met my partner and my friends. I respond with emojis and then I say, Glooby, you've been nothing but a good friend to me since we met. Truly one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life. Glooby says, thank you. And same to you. I'm so sick of being sick all the damn time. That's why I'll preach this. If you're going out and about, wear bug spray. Please don't get Lyme disease or Bartonella or any tick-borne disease. It's so ass. I think that these interactions fairly characterize the positive nature of our work interactions all the way up until the end. 
During a recent interview, Glooby explicitly lied about me multiple times. Glooby claimed that I did not support a GoFundMe that he ran outside of a retweet. In truth, I was both the first and the largest donor to his GoFundMe. This is publicly available information, which I have screenshotted for you here in order to avoid sharing any unnecessary private info. Let's take a look. As you can see, I am both the first donor and the largest donor. All of the donations that came in to this GoFundMe came after my retweet. So it was coming from my community. The support was coming from my community. And as you can see, that is all of the donors. Additionally, it should be noted that this GoFundMe occurred a significant amount of time after Glooby was no longer doing contract work for my channel. And yet I still supported it financially and with my platform. I do not know why he would lie about this, except to try and make me look bad, especially because I know that Glooby knows that I donated to that. He ran the GoFundMe and took the money out of the GoFundMe. Later, Glooby claimed that I spent $5,000 getting my tongue split instead of paying my team. This is false in multiple ways. My tongue split was a gift from my partner. I have never reduced team pay for my own expenses. Additionally, my tongue split only cost approximately one-tenth of his claimed estimation. The actual cost was about $600 Canadian. I don't even know where he got the idea to place the price so high because I am unaware of any body modder uh, that charges so steeply for such a procedure. It seems to me, once again, to be a way of misleading viewers. Glooby then claims I also spent money on a Trippy Red concert during a time when channel income was down. This was some time after my tongue split. It was a birthday gift from my partner, and the total cost of the ticket was about $60. While channel revenue did go down after COVID lockdowns ended, this was not unique to my channel at all, and in fact it's been acknowledged publicly by YouTube. Because everyone on my team at the time was paid a percentage of channel revenue, pay went down for all of us. I have always run this show with an incredibly tight margin, and I have never put my own pay before team pay, ever. The idea I did so is a flat-out lie. Finally, as mentioned before, I am now aware that Glooby lied not only to me, but to others about his age on multiple occasions. According to his interview, his 18th birthday is in August of 2021. Glooby told me that he was 18 in January of 2021, and again in July of 2021, which I can prove. As you can see here, Glooby in January of 2021 claims that he is 18. And again, in July of 2021, I say it might feed his ego, but it is really funny. And Glooby says it'll feed the horny minds, including mine. By the way, if you're worried about not safe for work stuff, I'm 18, so we vibin' cuz. In this message, he is referencing the fact that I had previously set boundaries with him about sending any sort of artwork that could be construed as not safe for work. I only ever offered contract thumbnail work to him given that he had communicated that he was 18 and was openly looking for starter work to build his profile as an artist. I wanted to be supportive of his aspirations as an artist. It's deeply upsetting to me to now know that Glooby repeatedly lied to me in order to try and circumvent my boundaries and get paid work from me and my channel. Just two weeks before this harassment campaign against me began, Glooby and I were speaking positively and supportively. We have only ever had one small issue, which was a crediting mistake that I made when we redid our YouTube auto descriptions. When I was made aware of the issue by Glooby, I resolved it within 13 minutes and Glooby stated there was no bad feelings between us. I have always been reachable and open to Glooby, though I admit that I am significantly less so now after he publicly and knowingly lied about me to the direct monetary benefit of specific drama channels who have used his word to enact a violent and deranged campaign against me. I find it strange and unsettling that Glooby claims to have had issues with me or my community but never once raised any of these issues to me, to my mod team, or even to my lead mod who is in a position to field issues with the community. 
Glooby was positively and regularly engaging in my Discord server, where he has over 21,000 messages sent until literal days before he decided to lie about me and my family, family to drama channels. To wrap things up, those of you who are concerned viewers have been made victim of a grossly misleading moral panic with the explicit goal of damaging my reputation and career. The perpetrators of this campaign of harassment and false allegations have directly engaged in deliberate doxing and explosive death threats to myself, my family, and my friends. I had no desire to give any credence to a harassment campaign so violent and built on such paltry and deeply misrepresented evidence especially because every response encourages obsessive stalkers to torment and target my family and friends more. I expect that certain people will continue their harassment campaigns undeterred by truth, but I do not intend to speak on this matter further. I hope that you as viewers will maintain a critical eye, especially to demonstrable serial liars and their drama farming monetization schemes that parasitically hurt others for their own gain while they go on violent and unhinged tirades. This calculated harassment campaign has been deeply hurtful and harmful to me and those close to me. I cannot overstate the pain and disappointment that I feel at having endured weeks of the most vile false allegations and abuse. It has spiraled into hurting numerous people associated with me in an attempt to hurt me, and I cannot denounce this enough. That is all for now. Thank you, and goodbye.